Command line interfaces, also known as CLIs, provide us with a text-based way of interacting with computers, opposed to the graphical way that most of us are used to. They are also pretty awesome because they allow programmers to interact with code and data directly. Let's check it out. In the video on computer programming, we reveal that code and data are the two things inside every computer program, and this is why we are now going to cover command line interfaces. There are three example CLIs that we will demo in this video. We have the PowerShell CLI on Windows operating systems, the JavaScript console inside web browsers, and the Linux terminal on Linux operating systems. Before we look at these, check out something with these names. We have shell, console, and terminal. I wanna just point out that all of these are interchangeable with CLI. When you hear any of these, most of the time they are all referring to some type of command line interface. All right, so let's go ahead and look at each of these. We'll look at PowerShell first. If you're on a Windows system, you can find PowerShell by searching for just PowerShell. And you'll see it's this one, Windows PowerShell with the little blue icon. So click that and then you'll get a window like this. One of the first things you'll notice is that there's not much to see. We just see a blank canvas and some text. Now this is always gonna be the case whenever we're using a command line interface because command line interfaces are text-based user interfaces. There's no graphics, it's just text. The most important thing that you're gonna see is this blinking cursor right next to the bracket. Now that is called a prompt. And the reason it's called a prompt is because the system or the shell is prompting us as the user to type something in. And it's just sitting there waiting for us to type in whatever we wanna type in. The most important aspect of every command line interface is the actual things that we can't see, the things behind the scenes. These items include code, data, and programs. So behind the scenes, whenever we're working inside CLIs, we have available to us a certain set of code, programs, and data that we can use to complete data-related tasks. To get an idea what types of things are behind the scenes, we can just type in some text, for example. Let's just type in NO. And then what I'm gonna do is hit the tab and on a Windows system, we get available programs that we could actually run from the CLI, from PowerShell. So one of the things that comes up, if we just keep hitting tab, we'll keep getting more options. PowerShell will display to us things that are available that start with whatever we typed. And in this case, we have Notepad. So if we click enter, then it will actually run the program Notepad and you'll see that pop up. So give that a try for yourself. The next CLI that I wanna show you is the JavaScript console inside of a web browser. Now I'm gonna use Google Chrome for this, but you can use any web browser that you have on your system and the steps are gonna be the same. So to get to the actual JavaScript console, we need to find the developer tools. So in Chrome, you do this by clicking the hamburger button at the top, go to more tools and go to developer tools. And then up will pop a window like what you see here. Now, don't be alarmed. There's usually a lot of stuff here, but what you wanna find is a tab that just says console. And then you'll have a window that looks like this. So this is the JavaScript console. Now, JavaScript is a programming language that is primarily used in web browsers. Now, if we compare the JavaScript console to the PowerShell CLI, we're gonna see that they both look more or less the same. What's different about them is what is behind the scenes. So the data and the code available to us. Now we saw in PowerShell, we had code or programs like Notepad that we could run. So let's just see what kinds of things we have in the JavaScript console. Let's start out by typing DOC and in the JavaScript console, there's a little pop-up box that shows us the types of things that are there. So we don't just have to tab, but we can see in this window here. So let's go ahead and click tab to complete the document, which was the first thing there. And let's click enter and see what that does for us. What that does is it returns something and it looks just like text, but if you see this arrow, we can click that. And what this gives us is the actual web page. So this is the document. Web pages are called documents under the hood, and this gives us access to that data. So with the PowerShell CLI, we had a certain set of code and data available to us. And now with the JavaScript console, we have another set of code and data available to us. 
Now let's look at the Linux terminal. So I'm here on a Linux system and I have the terminal pulled up. Now again, as we can see, everything looks about the same. The difference here is we have a dollar sign where the prompt is instead of the bracket. But otherwise, the look and feel of the CLI for the Linux terminal is gonna be exactly identical to the other CLIs that we just looked at. The difference again is going to be what's behind the scenes the code and data available to us. So the code and data available on Linux systems primarily involve code and data that allow you to administer a Linux system. That's gonna be similar to what we saw with PowerShell. We had code available to manage a Windows system. And then in the browser, we had code available to us to manage things inside of the browser, like the document, the web page. This gives you a first look at a few CLIs. There are many other CLIs out there and what distinguishes them is the code and data they provide. To use CLIs, we just type in commands opposed to pointing and clicking like we do with GUIs. We will dive deeper into CLIs and start to use them as we get deeper into the data science playlist. For now, just make sure that you realize the power and distinction of CLIs lies in the code and data that live behind the scenes. And if you have never launched a shell before, be sure to try it yourself either with the Linux terminal, the JavaScript console, or with PowerShell.